Hi, everybody. My name is Wes Anderson. I'm the Community Relations Director at Southern Hancock. Welcome to the next episode of our Schools 101 series. In Schools 101, we discuss various aspects of how schools are run. We want to educate our community and taxpayers on how schools work and the challenges schools face. Today, we're talking about enrollment and the district's growth plan. Now, like most topics we cover in this series, it's very complicated and we can never explain everything in just a few short minutes. So I'm always happy to continue this conversation. I'll put my email on the screen here. Feel free to send something over and, and we can have a chat about any of these topics or anything else that you have uh, related to Southern Hancock. I think there's a lot of misinformation out there right now about our current enrollment situation and the current housing growth in the New Palestine area. And from a parent perspective, I understand that. I'm sure it's easy to look at your child's class and say, well, there's three or four more kids in my kid's class this year than there was last year. So it must mean that schools are growing, right? Well, that's not exactly the case. And today we're going to show you how that's actually the opposite in our specific situation. Before we start talking about the district's growth plan, we need to understand how enrollment and growth are tied together. A school district's full picture of the enrollment situation comes down to three main things. First, the number of students enrolled in the corporation. Second, the number of teachers who work in that corporation. And third, the number of classrooms in all of the schools in the corporation. Let's take a look at all three of those individually. As we mentioned in our previous video about finance, we receive funding based on enrollment. More kids, more money. Fewer kids, less money. So I want to show you a snapshot of the history of the district's enrollment here and you can see that while the district has grown some over the past few years, our district has not experienced significant growth in the classroom. Basically 300 kids in 10 years. That's roughly 20 students per grade or two students per grade per year for 10 years. We'll talk more about our plan for future housing growth in a minute, but what we want our community to understand is that our enrollment situation is not always parallel to the same trajectory of the number of new houses you may see go up in our district. As I said earlier, I think the misconception is that schools are overcrowded because of large class sizes, which brings me to point number two, the number of teachers that work in a school corporation. As we said before, the money to pay teachers comes from the education fund, which is a part of the state budget. These funds are allocated on a per student rate. An enrollment increase of about 10 students across the district would provide the corporation with enough money to hire one new teacher. So let's do a quick example here to explain this a little more clearly. Say there are 4,000 students in your corporation. It's a little bit bigger than Southern Hancock, but again, we always like round numbers. And let's say you have 160 teachers. That's an average class size of 25 to 1. Now, an enrollment decrease of 10 students would cause the district to lose revenue equivalent to the salary of one teacher. So say a teacher chooses to leave or retire at the end of the school year, the district may not replace that teacher. So that means there are 3,990 students and 159 teachers. That's an average class size of about 25.1. Now, we obviously can't deal in fractions of a student. 0.1 students times 159 classrooms is about 16 kids. So those 16 students have to be rolled into other classrooms somewhere else, which is what makes the class sizes go up. Now, let's take this example and make it a little more specific to our situation. Say you lose 60 students like we did for 2020-21. That's 3,940 students and 154 teachers, which makes your class size across the district go up to almost 26. So as you can see, when the enrollment drops, the number of teachers drop and class sizes actually go up. Now, let's go the other way. Say you increase enrollment by 300 students. That's 4,300 students. That could pay for as many as 25 new teachers, which would be a total of 190 teachers in your corporation. So now we're down to 22 students per class. See how enrollment drives a class size? If the budget increases, more teachers get hired, classes go down, and more programs can get offered as well. That's all predicated on having classrooms for them to teach in, which brings us to point number three, our district growth plan. Our administrative team has worked diligently over the past several years to prepare for future housing growth. As of this recording, we're expecting about 600 new houses in our corporation that have been approved but have not been built yet. Generally speaking, schools will estimate about 0.7 kids per house. So, for the purpose of the video, 600 houses, 0.7 students, that's an increase of 420 students. That's about 17 new classrooms worth of students at 25 students per class. Does that make sense? Okay, here's our current classroom situation. The opening of New Palestine Intermediate, the reopening of New Palestine Junior High, and the renovation project New Palestine High School will clear up considerable space in most of our schools. All of these factors provide us with 36 empty classrooms in our schools. Some have more than others, but generally speaking, we're ready to absorb significant growth in our community. 36 classrooms could hold 900 new students, 
We're just waiting for those students to enroll so we can hire teachers to fill them. And again, your class sizes can go down and new programs can be offered. Additionally, another 25 rooms in our schools are being used for other things by various organizations like your parent-teacher organizations or our YMCA before and after school care. If needed, those rooms could also become classrooms, which would take on another 625 students. So we're prepared to absorb as many as another 1,500 students right now corporation-wide. When the growth comes, and we know that it's coming, our budget will increase, we'll hire more teachers, your student's class size will go down, more classes and programs will be offered at more levels. Those are all positive things, right? So, as you can see, enrollment and growth go together. As our enrollment grows, our budget goes up, more staff gets hired. They work hand in hand with each other. And while we know our enrollment will soon grow, it's not here yet. We know those houses are coming, we know those students are coming, we know our area will grow. Right now, it's not. So, we continue to wait, we continue to prepare to make those class sizes go down, hire more teachers, and make your educational experience better here at Southern Hancock. Thanks for watching this episode of Schools 101.